Show, a show committed to equipping you to hone your media skills better to stand out from the crowd as a go-to expert in your field. Each week, Rich Bontrager interviews top leaders, influencers, authors, speakers, podcasters, and media professionals about how to leverage media best to help you shine brighter on camera and stage as a go-to expert. Now, here's your host, The Trigger, Rich Bontrager. Welcome back to Rock the Stage Show, back on Sunday night, 7 p.m., of course. We're gathered all together for another dynamic, great show, and you're in for a treat this Sunday night. You know, we talk a lot about branding and the importance of branding, but brands are all the buzz right now. But knowing how to leverage your brand and learning how to stand out from the crowd is so important. But people talk about that. But the thing they don't often talk about is standing out in your uniqueness, in your greatness. And that's where it's a game changer. And that's what we're going to get in tonight with our guests. Do you want to enjoy this one? We're going back over the border, back up to the northern Canada, and we're going to have a great conversation here tonight. But before we do that, we do want to thank our sponsors that make this show possible each and every week. Adavita Studios. Adavita works with you to produce your audio books, your podcast series, and help you to distribute it widely into the marketplace. Adavita is connecting your voice to the world. And for more information, go to adavita.com. And we will want to to thank our other sponsor here tonight, it's Suspiciously Convenient Productions. Their name may sound different, but they're a media, TV production, and movie production company that can help you take your dreams, make them a reality. Suspiciously Convenient Productions. Thank you for making this all possible once again on Rock to Stage Show. Tonight, we're going to get into the idea of leveraging your authority through your brand power. Lisa Patrick is with us here tonight. Lisa spends her days as a growth strategist helping executives, founders, celebrities, influencers, speakers build and scale their personal brands, their business brands, while increasing market and relevancy in profit. She helps them through the Bravura, and she's going to explain that tonight. I guarantee you, the unyielding brilliance, experiences, and knowledge to remain relevant and profitable. She connects people and opportunities while living her purpose to help others stand out in their own greatness. And if that's not enough, she is known as, I love this, the pit bull, a catalyst for innovation and disruption. She's the queen of persistence. Here now is Lisa Patrick. Good to see you, Lisa. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> so just, just to clarify, I didn't label myself the queen of persistence or the pit bull. Other people did. <laughs> <laughs> well, and... It's fun to know you're the other pit bull because I know the other pit bull as well. So. <laughs> the female version or male? Uh, the female version. Oh, Just very me. good. Well, we should get together and collaborate then. Sounds like a good idea. <laughs> so you are you, you are a golden guru, some of the top 30 branding experts out there. Well, that's what well, they say. I don't know if that's really the reality or not, but that's what they say. So let's, let, we'll go with that for now. That's what you've been labeled and branded. Yeah. So I want to take you back because you, you and I have several overlapping connections, yeah, but you yeah. want to be a detective when you were a little girl reading Nancy Drew. I was doing Hardy Boy books at the same time. Yeah, yeah. which is aging us, right, Trigger? Like that's yeah. aging us, but that's the reality. What, what what fascinated you about that whole concept of detective, exploring, yeah. investigativeness? What, what, what pulled you into that? I don't know. I think I have a, an innate nature to be very curious about things. I've always wanted to know, you know, not so much, you know, I wasn't the, the kid that was picking apart things to look at them and then putting them back together. But I've always been curious about people. And I think that has led me really well. And you know, investigating in the policing world and what have you, it is all about the people, right? You're understanding behavior, you're understanding personality styles, you're understanding why do people do the things that they do, right? And you look for those patterns. And and I'm, my entire life, that's always been in the back of my brain and how I look at things and how I envision business and strategy and what have you. And so it was just a natural um 
arena that I wanted to be in. And of course, my dad was an RCMP. So I think that might have had something to do with it as well. And for those of you listeners, that's Royal Canadian Mountain Police here in Canada. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I think that that's why. But I think curiosity, you know, you'll hear Gary Vee talk about it a lot, is really the root to all greatness. And if we're not always looking and thinking about things a little bit differently and asking really targeted and specific questions and focus questions, we don't get to the answers that we need. So when did you find your greatness? How did you stumble upon, I know branding, I know people, let's uh, get together. You know what? That's a very great question that, um, it, it's, it's interesting because I struggled for many years trying to figure out really what was my market differentiator, right? Because, you know, we're the kitchen sink and this happens all the time with my clients, right? You're the kitchen sink to everything, uh, but you are to nothing, right? And so how do you describe that and articulate that in, in the marketplace? And so I had coaches because we can never see the tree through the forest, right? And so the problem is, is that I can see everybody else's brand. I can see their greatness. I understand what their unique value is in the market. I understand how to present it, but, um, but I could do it for myself. And so I have their coaches to help me through that. And I still do to this day. I have five different coaches. So it's and very we, important. And we, we, we share a good friend, coach, mentor, Jim Cathcart. We do. And, and we talk about this all the time is no matter what level you are, the best of the best always have a coach. Michael well, Jordan. And, Interestingly enough, Jim and I wrote the book together, Intelligent Curiosity, right? So, I wonder if you're going to drop that in somehow. Yeah, of well, course. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't be good at building and monetizing my brand if I didn't, right? <laughs> but, but you're so right about that. We don't think about, because we're the coaches, we're the experts, but who do the experts go to to maintain that they keep going up? Because you have to stay above the curve because it's ever changing. Yeah. Is, is that hard for you to change the coaching hat expert that you are? And become the student? No, uh, not at all. Um, because I have a, a deep thirst for knowledge, right? And I, again, truthfully, I'm always looking at how can I better myself? I, I And I hate, I'll be honest, and I'm telling everybody here, I hate the word expert. I hate the word guru. And the reason I hate expert is because then it's definitive that I don't have anything else to learn. And I'm always learning. I'm learning through my clients' mistakes. I'm learning through my own mistakes, right? And mm -hmm. I, that's just a natural progression. And so expert says that put your mark in the sand and this is it. And this is who I am. And I'm so great. And I hate it. I absolutely hate it. I understand why the market needs to have the word. I just don't like the word. So... I also love a phrase that brand and business is a people sport. You've yeah. turned this into, because I, I come out of sports broadcasting. I love sports. I eat, drink, and sleep. So the idea you've yeah. made this into a sport, it makes yeah. it sound fun. Is it you, fun? Oh, my God. So <laughs> I had a close friend. This is several years ago, personal friend, not a business relationship. We said, don't you have any fun? And I looked at her and I went, uh, every single damn day. Oh, sorry. Can I swear? Like <laughs> business <laughs> is fun. That is my source of entertainment. I love breaking apart business. I love watching. You know, I had a, a call with somebody recently that's a mutual friend of ours. And and just to hear in her voice the excitement around, oh, my God, she got some clarity in her business and what she wanted to do, right? That's mm -hmm. fun for me. Like, yeah. but just because it doesn't, that's not her idea, this friend of mine's idea. Of, business is fun. It should be fun. And if it's not, then you're doing something wrong. Yes. No, I, I tell people, if I'm not having fun, I'm not doing it. Yeah. I will check out. I will back away. And every day, this is new fun. It is amazing what you learn from other people while you're coaching, yeah. while you're consulting. And it's amazing what in the moment, those light bulb moments that, that you thought you were going to about this, but the conversation takes you here. And all of a sudden, it's like, here's yeah. the genius. We found it. Well, I was working with a celebrity uh, last year, and one of the things that we talked a lot about, and this happens lots in the celebrity entertainment industry, is that they're really good at what they do. They have a lane, you know, they're great in front of the camera, you know, they're great in the movies, they're great on stage performing, but the 
But the problem is, is they have all this reach. And this, and when I worked in the speaking world, you know, you wanted all this reach in, in the marketplace and you had stage presence presence and you had reach in the room but not offline and so what happens is is that now they've got all this reach but they're not monetizing it in the right way because somebody hasn't come along to teach them well listen when you have x amount of facebook followers or tiktok followers how are you getting them off the platforms right how are you building those relationships offline to actually serve and upserve them in unique and different ways and that's monetization right and that's probably the biggest hiccup for people because i'm sure we've had the same conversation we could almost say word for word i have all this content i've worked so hard i yeah. love what i get to do i love the people i work with but i'm not making it financially they yeah. they don't know how to make that turn yeah to turn the profit what's what's some of the biggest barriers on that what what, what keeps us yeah, lack, lack of knowledge of, and it's not so much that they're, it's not business sense, because I think they have business sense. I think it's lack of knowledge and understanding and more specifically trust. Who do I trust that's not going to take advantage of my brand? Because their brand is them, right? They are the brand. Yeah. There's no question about it. Not take advantage of it, but build it properly. And I think there's a lot of experts out there who say i'm going to do this and i'm going to do that and i'm going to do this right but they don't actually build the foundation and that's the biggest you know if i implore anyone is if you understand the foundation of the business from a monetization and the technology of the business of what you're building you can go anywhere but you've got to be able to build that foundation because you'll have leaky faucets everywhere and you'll be losing money in all sorts of places that's great advice because again, coming out of pandemic, coming out of a rough 2023, mm -hmm. the number one question I have half of people is, what can I do? I've lost all my confidence because I'm not making the money. It's not scaling like I wanted to. And they're confident in this shot. And they're wondering if everything they build is completely wrong, but it's really not built wrong. It's just, they don't know how to monetize it. Well, and, and I, I think it is to a certain degree, at least in my experience. So I'm not mm -hmm. going to speak on behalf of everybody else, but in my experience, usually built wrong. Right. So what's happened is somebody's built like we're in talking online brand presence right now. Yeah. Right? They built a really great website, but the website's not speaking to everybody else. It's not functioning properly. It's beautiful, but it's not selling them on what their greatness is. Right. On the unique value and the problems are solving for somebody else in the marketplace. Right. Or when you're thinking about celebrities and what have you, then it's not monetizing who they are in the appropriate way and so the technology stack is built all wrong and so i'm often coming in stripping things apart and rebuilding so that that base that foundation is working properly and that's really important and often not talked about so your company talks about bravura yeah well what the heck is it well, Bravura is all about everybody else, right? When we build brands, my brand is not about me. It's about the people I serve. Again, it's always about the people that you serve and the problems that you're solving for them. But the problem is, is that most people are trying to solve 50 different problems. We can't solve 50 different problems for one person. You can only solve a problem at a time for a person. And so what you need to do is think about the patterns of what is that one problem that your low hanging fruit in your marketplace, not the whole world, right? Like that's the other thing. Yes, you could probably could serve the whole world, but the problem is, is you're not making money and you're not serving the whole world. So let's talk about who can we serve mm -hmm. and let's build a product around that. What is the patterns of behavior for that particular audience that you're solving, that they're always coming to you and asking you, there's gotta be something, my job, is to think and ask the questions and be curious enough and listen to what they're saying to find that answer and then serve the market accordingly. And then you can upserve and cross serve and upsell or whatever. I like the word upserve, but that's the reality. So you said something right at the beginning of that. Uh, that, and I would, I just want to go back because I think it's often overlooked. Your brand is not about you yeah. it's about the people you serve and i think people do overall think the brand is about me yeah clarify what you just said i think yeah. it's a nugget i think that you know we hear it all the time 
you know, it, it's not about you, it's about your audience, right? But the reality is, is that when they start to get into the weeds of the actual execution of what they're doing, the, it's it's retraining your brain to think, you know, it's not I, 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 it is really about them. And when you understand the message in the market and how you're articulating that to actually serve to somebody, there's nothing that drives me more crazy. Here's an example. You get, you, you're listening to somebody on social media and the first thing he says, hello, everyone. Well, I'm sorry. There is one person on the other side of this. There is not an audience of people. And, and you've just wasted the first three seconds by saying hello to everyone gone. Yeah. Right. You like, have to repeat that over and over again. People do not understand. It's not mass media. It it's isn't personal media that goes to the masses yes. and people do not understand it's that. about relationship with the person on the other side of the phone. How are you gaining their attention individually, not as a collective, right? Yeah, you're on Facebook as a collective, but you're talking to one person at a time. So it is about what is their problem? How are you talking to them? Like I get very passionate about it because it drives me crazy. Oh, and me lots too. of times I'll see really great experts really great people who have all this bravura this great brilliance all these experiences but they're talking to the masses and they've lost the attention of the person on the other side of the phone that was the first thing they taught us in broadcasting 101 it's mass media but you have to talk to one person yeah. and it's multiplies by one by one by yeah. one but if you talk with i you i'm glad you're here today you start using those words instead of hi y'all it's a game changer. It is a game changer. And I think the, the reality is, is that now I feel when I like, and remember that it is our job as experts and we're all experts, by the way. Right. Yes. We all have experiences. Like there might be a thousand professional speakers, right? There might be a thousand management consultants. There might be a thousand plumbers for God's sakes. But it is the collection of your experiences and your wisdom that makes you unique in the market and how you show up as you in the market. Nobody else can that, that's nobody else can change that. That is you collectively. And so when you present that in the market, people are gravitated towards you. And that is your differentiator. That's why I wrote the book, The Distinction Factor, right? teaching people how to really understand what makes you you because that's what you need to sell in the marketplace and people and forget that that's branding so again now we're back to the uniqueness i opened up the show yeah. talking about uniqueness people are afraid to stand in their uniqueness because they think it's geeky it's awkward and instead well, it feels clumsy it feels clumsy, right? Yeah. It shouldn't feel clumsy. And good. I'm glad it does. I have a client right now who, you know, was struggling with coming out into the market to talk about a very dear topic to her that made her very vulnerable in the marketplace, quite honestly, and was afraid of what other people were going to think. Well, the reality is, is you should never care about what other people think as hard as that is. And you are going to feel clumsy and it's going to feel awkward and you are vulnerable, but what is the worst thing that could happen to you? Somebody says you suck on, on Facebook. Who cares? Who cares? Delete. <laughs> Big deal. Great. Thank you. You know, at least you know me now. Great. Let's move on. Right? Like you have to be willing to be vulnerable because that's how people get to know you and how, they that's why they're coming to you because of you've been there and you've done it and it's where they want to be and they want to look to you to lead on how you're going to do that for them well and because they come with their own insecurities their own doubts yeah. their own questions oh my god i'm insecure every single day i mean i was nervous coming on this show right like oh. you know i, I had no. a great mentor and you know who she is patricia yeah, Fripp. yeah. and Thanks. you know she's nervous every time and i mean this is a woman who has blazed trails public speaking and if she's nervous every time then i guess i'm okay that i'm nervous too well and that's where people are looking for authentic people they can relate to they don't want the superhero they don't want the bullet bouncing person they want someone that can say and more so now i can help you 
more so now than at any other time in the market. I'm writing a book right now called Belongingomics, and it's the val it's really about the economics of relationship. And it's not about how do I profit from our relationship. It's about how do I really build deep nurturing relationships with people that do end up in profit, but it's organically happens because I think from a business lens, you think from a business lens. So we all want to make money. That's the reality. We all have to, you know, we got put food on the table and, you know, for me, it's my, you know, my kid's education and what have you. So the reality is that is the underlining that we all want to make money. How do we really make meaningful relationships that are long term that are you're always top of mind to somebody else? And that takes work. Oh, gosh, yes. And so the emotional relationship of your brand, we're, we're just digging on the top of that. People don't realize that they, the emotional connection is so important. Yeah. What other tips can you give on breaking that emotional and make it better and stronger for people? Because there has to be a bond. There has to be something that says, I need to call Lisa because I identify with Lisa and she gets me. Okay. So there's no secret. That's, that's, that's the crazy thing about it. I've already told you what the secret is. So have you ever been in a conversation trigger where you asked a question and for the next 32 minutes, that person talked about themselves? Mm -hmm. Oh for yeah. 32 minutes. They yeah. never asked you a question about you. They talked about themselves and you kept asking questions that dove them deeper into what the conversation was about. Yeah. And they walked off that call. Now you have not, I hadn't said a word about yourself and they walked away from that call going, Oh my God, that was the best call. That Lisa Patrick, she's amazing. Oh my God. I just like, I, I felt like I'd known her all her life and they haven't asked me a single question. Right. That's the secret. Cause it isn't about you. It is about them and how you make other people feel. That's the secret to belongingomics. And that's a secret to actually building and scaling brand and business. So I know through your company and how you coach it, you, 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 you have a playbook. Yeah, sort of. Yeah. <laughs> what? Because I think, I think we share a common passion when it comes to executives. I think executives should engage in social media. I think they should put their stamp, put your voice. But a lot of executives either don't think they have time, they don't want to play the game, whatever their rationale is. Should executives be more active on social media and sharing their message, using yeah. their own personality, using their own stories? Absolutely. So here's the thing. People don't buy brands. People buy people, right? And, I mean, I could – plethora of, of percentages that we could sit and talk and bore the whole audience about, right? But the reality is, is that when you have a business, when you are working in a business, you are creating your own acumen of knowledge and experiences that you need to be able to articulate in the market at some point, you know, traditional resumes, what have you. But the reality is, is that when you build a brand around your experiences and your knowledge and those questions that are always coming to you as an executive. So I'm coaching an executive right now. And I like to say consulting because I hate the word coach. So I'm, consult I'm consulting with an executive right now. And I've implored him that every single time that somebody comes to his office or his Zoom room, because we're in a hybrid model now that he writes down those questions and then he finds the time in his calendar every week to click record and answer those questions. So that when he does go out into the marketplace um, outside of his executive role, mm -hmm. he now has a plethora of content to build a brand around. So if you create the playbook for them, people will show up. People will advocate for your brand, for your business, for your brand, and people buy people. The problem is, is organizations are so afraid of somebody saying the wrong thing or doing the wrong thing. They don't do anything at all. And then all of a sudden they've lost all this opportunity. They're spending hundreds of thousands of dollars with a marketing team yes. to build a business brand. When in reality, if they would just take some time and actually build a personal brand playbook within the organization, they would be so much farther ahead. For those with us tonight, you're getting a masterclass in that one little portion right there. You need to replay and replay that because I know I'll be using that as a soundbite. Yeah. <laughs>
Yeah, you, it's, you, it, it's so valuable and so overlooked, you know, yeah. and for, for an executive, it's really important because you do, and that does bring value. And the market is changing the look, how people are looking at personal brands, meaning the, like an executive, it doesn't matter. You don't have to be a celebrity to have a personal brand. Everybody is a personal brand. And if you are a parent and you have a young child, please go buy your child's domain. Protect your online real estate. I cannot say this enough. We go out and we buy real estate in the real world, but online is another real estate marketplace. And yes. you need to be protecting your name. Very mm -hmm. important. Now, you just said exactly where I was going to go a few moments ago is you are the brand. People buy you is you are the brand. Now, my question is, what's that fine line? How do we protect from being the slimy seller and we're selling ourselves as the brand versus being the consultant, the coach, yeah, the helper it's easy. brand? It's easy. Talk about them. Stop talking about yourself. You no longer become that slimy, icky, sleazy, ooky, right? Like Kendrick Shope is a per, is like, I cannot advocate enough for this lady. She talks about this all the time. She believes in your business. She believes in you, right? The reality is, is you start talking about yourself all the time. Nobody wants to hear it. Nobody cares. I don't care. But can you tell me about your experiences and how you can solve a problem that I have? Ooh, that's a whole nother ballgame. So what is the importance of brand brand design? People think logos, colors, all yeah. those things, but it's important. It's important. You need consistency in your brand. There's no question. You need an identity that when you show up, people know, oh my God, there's Oprah. Oh my God, there's Lisa Patrick. Now that I'm like Oprah, but I'm just saying, right? Like, oh right. my God, there's Trigger, right? Because they can visually tell that that brand has a consistency in the identity and in the voice of the brand. That's important. It's That's work. But your brand is the message you put in the market and how you show up. Where does, since we're so social media driven, we are now virtual hybrid, like you said, and yeah. we're coming back into a new world. Yeah. Where does the in-person side of your brand fall now? Because it was always in person, always in person, but it's a new game for so many people. How, how do you help us navigate that for a brand in person? Yeah. So I, I, I don't know. And there might, might be other people that would, would argue against this, but I still think the value of being in a room um, is so much more important than the value online. But it, but your online presence should be a complementary of how you show up in a room, right? right? And so I think that's really important. I, what you see right now is always what you get. Like I don't change any other way. And in fact, most times I'm, you know, I have makeup on today, which I normally don't even wear. So you know, like. The reality is, is that when I show up in a room, I often get told, oh, my God, you're just like the person that I hear. Yeah, because I don't know how to be anything else but me. Right. right. And so I think your online presence is an enhancement of how you show up in a room. And I've, I've told people for years, what you see in Walmart is what you're going to see at the football game, what you're going to yeah. see on camera. Yeah. That's just me. Yeah. And that consistency, as we're talking about, is so important because then they do feel like they know you in advance. They feel like they can truck you. Yeah. That credibility is, it's not like you just threw on a suit, threw on a dress and you're fake now. People are yeah. tired of fake. Yeah. I, I think the problem is, is that a lot of people don't trust themselves that they have the knowledge and the experience, right? Yeah. And I think when you have the confidence to show up in the market and the courage, and it does take courage, right? Like you could, because... Yes, you can self-sabotage yourself. You have limiting beliefs and all these things. Of course, those are important, you know, a part of mm -hmm. what you are and who you are. But again, I think when you just show up as yourself, I mean, nobody else is going to show up for you. You have to do the work. It's you. It's your responsibility, right? So I think, you know, building that trust and just being you, um, and it does take time. Like, I look back at some of my... <laughs> I look back at some of my first videos. Oh my God, were they bad? They Damn. were so not me. It was it was atrocious that I even showed up in the market that way. Like there, 
uh, someday I'm going to release them because they're true bloopers. So that's what I tell people to do because I've been on camera mic forever, but I tell people I pull out my old stuff to show you that was then, this is now, and I will poke holes in my own stuff and say, don't do it that way. Yeah. And there's so much value, again, the transparency, the vulnerability, yeah. but it's so teachable when you're going to pull out an archive and go, I want to show you bad, and it's me. Yeah. It raises your credibility by being that vulnerable and being that real because we're all trying to be yeah. the next video rock star and everything else. But some people are just afraid to do it. They don't want to show the other side anymore. They want to just show the good. Yeah, I I like to think, and maybe I've got some rose-colored glasses on when I think about this, but I think the world is changing from that, right? And I think that is the positive influence of social media, not the negative influence of yeah. that. I mean, there's more negative than there is positive, obviously. But I think the reality is, is that, you know, now, are you ever going to catch me doing a video brushing my teeth and talking and putting my makeup on? No, sorry. <laughs> and that that's just, that's not true to who I am, right? Like, right. why would anybody want to watch that? Each to their own, right? But there are people that do, but that's not the audience that I serve that's going to enjoy that type of content, right? So I think you have to be, you know, you have to have a good understanding of why. Here's the other big thing, Trigger, and I know that you know this, strategy. So this is so, like, I have done more strategic work in the last six months than anything else because you have to understand why are you doing that video? What is the purpose behind that video? How does it fit in your strategy? And strategy is different than execution. And people are very tactical, but people don't be strategic about it, right? And so you have to think about how are you going to win in the market? What's the strategy? And then complement the execution plan accordingly. And that's a huge one because a strategy is something people think about their content calendar. Yes, great. And but, that's execution. Right, right. So that's what they're thinking, though. But it's really the story, the message. You, you, I, I, I coach a lot of people on episodic. So do a coaching video, leave yeah. them hanging, make them come back for another one, make them come back for another. The yeah. episodic side of coaching is very intentional, very strategic. Yeah. But you instead, you get a lot of one-offs. And it's like just yeah. popcorn going everywhere. You need to be strategic to have them stick with you. 100%. Yeah, the execution piece of it, you're absolutely right, Trigger, has to be strategic, right? You have to run them. You have to understand why you're doing what you're doing to the end goal. What's the end goal? And then reverse engineer it, right? But the reality is, is that those are all tactical execution pieces in trying to grow, right? Your brand, whether it's business or personal, doesn't really matter. But what is the strategy? What is the thing that you, the reason that you're doing everything that you're doing, not just financial goals, right? right. But actual, what, why is the market going to perceive you this way? And what do we, what assumptions are we going to make about the market that we're, that our execution plan is going to teach us? And then we're going to adapt accordingly. And that's project road mapping. And that's why I think makes me different in the market is when I think about marketing and branding, I build a project roadmap that makes sense based on the goals, right? And it's a collective. It's not just one. I'm not just going to do content and put it in the market and be spaghetti against the wall because that's what that is. Yeah, That's the reality. It's spaghetti against the wall and you hope that it sticks. It's not going in today's marketplace. Sorry. Well, and that whole strategy then tie in the customer journey. You have to know your customer, know who you're going to serve, why you're going to serve them. Yeah. So that strategy, everything you're talking about, it's got to also be, I'm going to take my customers on a journey to get them the results, which yeah. also turns into the revenue side. But if you don't do that, it's just chaotic for everybody. Well, then you, and, and the reality is, is that you might know who your customer is and then find out that wasn't your customer at all. Right. And so now you have to start to think about I have a huge male following base. I don't have a lot of females in my in my following. Right. I'm actually the other way, which is very interesting. By yeah, so it's interesting. Right. So but if I was I was thinking not too long ago, I was thinking about, you know, I have this handbag in mind that I want to create. Like my mind goes all over. the place. Anyways, 
And I'm like, I'm going to create this handbag and I'm going to push it into the marketplace. But when I looked at my analytics and I looked at the strategy, because the handbag is the execution piece of it, I went, wait a minute. It, my message has to be, hey, gentlemen, do you want to buy your wife a really great handbag? Not, hey, ladies, look at I got a great handbag that's unique in the marketplace. Right. Right. Very different. If you do not understand the strategy behind what you're doing and why you're doing it and the analytics of your audience, it's no point. That's bullseye again, because we may think, but we do. I mean, the analytics, yeah. the research. The emails, pay attention to the emails, who they're coming into and, and learn how to fit that all in yeah. together. And, and by the way, you don't have to have 20,000 followers or 200,000 followers to start to determine some of those patterns, Yes. right? To, to observe your audience accordingly. So before I let you go here today, I do want to flip to the side of what are a couple of tips to help people not destroy their brand, hurt their brand? What are some like no fly zones or dangers that we need to be aware of? Well, I'm going to get ostracized for this, but politics, we all have a political opinion. I have a political opinion. I don't ever talk politics online. Mm -hmm. So, but I see a lot of people do it. Um, and that's a choice in your brand, right? So if you choose that you are going to have bold statements, nothing wrong with that. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, but yeah. you have to be prepared and strategic about how you're going to respond to those and what your brand voice in the market is going to be inconsistent with it. Right? So if you were a very polarizing and I follow a few people who are extremely polarizing, great individuals don't mm -hmm. always, you know, some of them, I'm like, woo can't believe you just said that, but okay, right? But they're they're intentional and strategic about why they're doing what they're doing and, and their voice behind that brand. So I think you have to, if you're going to be that person, then you need to always show up that way and you yeah. need to find the courage to handle the backlash of it and yeah. that you're okay with that. And don't backlash with anger. You just need to be your guy, stay in that lane, stay in that voice, and deflect and go on because if you come back with anger everyone's going to go i can well, take I, I all think, the time <laughs> yeah i would agree i think sometimes you know somebody told me once wait 24 hours if something pisses you off yeah. wait 24 hours before you respond because now you're going to respond from an emotion rather than from a logical and you need to business is personal it is about people it is about the relationships but business decisions is not emotional. They're logical. Lisa Patrick, this has been so good. good. We could go another two hours, I think, you and I, as we were told in advance. Yeah. Be danger. You guys will have a good time together. <laughs> well, I've time. thoroughly enjoyed this. This has been amazing. And and thank you to everybody who is, is following. Um, and Trigger is obviously a great host. And please follow How to Rock the Stage Show. Well, thank you very much. I'll send you the You're check welcome. later on. But we do want to send them to you. That's what you, this is all about. Hit the QR code. No, no, this is about the audience that's watching. It has nothing to do with me. <laughs> so, Lisa, what are they going to find when they do go to your website? Uh, information about how I can help them get to where they want to go. Very simple. Look at that. It's all about yeah. you. So go check it out. You do want to learn about the Brevara. And, and the deeper side, because we covered just a little bit here yeah. today, Hope, hopefully what your appetite, but go check that out with Lisa. And again, as we wind down, you write books, you do videos, you do interviews. And when it comes to this whole brand thing, because we're all now media empires or we're building media empires, yeah. what would you suggest for someone who's trying to make that corner turn and say, this one piece will help me get the financial piece, the brand piece, by leveraging media better, what would you recommend someone yeah. take a step further? Yeah, get clarity on why you're doing what you're doing. And more importantly, I think it's what makes you unique, right? Because if you haven't figured out why you're unique, what's that one value that you bring to the market, that one thing, not a hundred things, that one thing that you bring to the market, um, that's where you need to start. Lisa Patrick. The Pitbull Catalyst with us today on Rock the Stage. Thanks for being with us today. Lisa, we really, really appreciate your time. Thank you. Appreciate you.
Again, you want to check her out, learn more about what she's got going on. She is packed full of good information to elevate you, your brand, and turn that corner financially. Because again, that's a big puzzle piece for a lot of people. Reach out and learn more about what she's doing. We do want to thank our sponsors once again, making this all possible. This amazing conversation today was brought to you by Adobe Studio. Learn more about how they can help you with your audiobooks, your podcasts, to amplify you and your voice through media, audavitastudios.com. And Suspiciously Convenient Productions is with us, and they're going to help you take your creative ideas and really turn them into an actual TV series, into a movie. Learn more about what they're doing at Suspiciously Convenient Productions. That's going to do it for tonight. Once again, we're here Sunday night, 7 p.m. Eastern Time, having more in-depth, uncensored, unscripted conversations with celebrities, influencers, authors. Help you shine on camera, shine on stage, to elevate you and your brand authority. We'll see you then, Sunday night, 7 p.m. Eastern Time, for another edition of Rock the Stage.